A little girl who experienced something so scary that she blocked out the second part of that memory and never told the story. Did she think the story was just too scary? Today we're going to uncover a second part episode to last week's super scary story. Welcome to History and Mysteries. I'm your host, Regina Helton, and I'm about to finish that super scary story. So if you have not listened to last week's super scary story, please head over and do that. As just a very brief recap, last week I told you the first part story of a family story that has been passed down from my mother about, once again, the Campbell Street house that was so scary, she split the story up into two parts, but not willingly. She told one story for years as part of her I don't know, contribution to our family collection of scary stories. But then, one day, I found out that there was an untold piece to this story. Sort of a second half that really was a game changer. Once I learned this second half, I feel like I learned something about my mom that I just didn't even know existed. So, let's get started on this super spooky story. Part two. After my mother had the experience in the upstairs bedroom, she, like I said last week, packed all her stuff and headed back downstairs. She never wanted to sleep in that bedroom again. And for years, I thought that was the end of the story. I always wondered what conversation took place with my grandmother. Um, As a mother myself, I cannot imagine my child coming and telling me a horrific scary story and then we just eat breakfast um so I've always wished you know that I knew that backstory but I don't um maybe I'll ask my mom about it again someday but all I know is she left that room and never looked back and then when I was a teenager we were hanging out with a family friend one night and we were telling ghost stories and my mom Uh, reluctantly told this story as our family friend kind of prompted her to tell it. And my mom once again ended the story at she packed her bedroom up and never looked back. And then her friend kind of looked at us sort of confused, like, why didn't you tell the best part of the story? And my mom looked visibly uncomfortable and said, well, I, I told the story, that's it. And her friend just sort of kept pushing, saying, no, you left out the best part, you know, tell her the best part, meaning tell me the best part of the story. And my mom just sort of refused. And then finally, she told me the second part of the story. And when I say she looked uncomfortable, I mean, she looked uncomfortable. It was definitely a memory that she did not seem to enjoy reliving. And to this day, she looks uncomfortable when she talks about it. She kind of just doesn't talk about it and if you do kind of get this part of the story out of her she just doesn't really tell it with enthusiasm she just honestly doesn't want to talk about it so mom if you listen to the story I'm sorry that we're talking about it (laughs) um so the story goes part two after she had the experience with the attic doorknob turning um, but the door never opened she said it would just shake and the doorknob would turn Um, something else happened, something absolutely terrifying, something that will make you want to not let your bed covers hang over the sides of your bed and not leave your feet uncovered. So my mom says that when the attic door knob stopped turning and all seemed to be quiet for a few minutes, she felt a tug on her bed covers. Yeah, you heard that right. A tug on her bed covers. I cannot think of literally anything more terrifying than something or someone tugging my bed covers in the dark. But something tugged her bed covers. And at first, she thought that it was just her bed, you know, covers perhaps starting to slide into the floor. So she pulled her bed covers back up. And once again, her bed covers were tugged down. 
And she said that that's when she realized that this was not right. There was something going on that just was not supposed to be happening. So her dog was, if you remember, the little chihuahua named PJ, was starting to growl and bark again, sensing that something was in the room with them that was not supposed to be there. And she once again grabbed her covers and pulled them back up. And on the final tug, her covers went completely into the floor. So there she lay in her bed in the dark with her growling chihuahua. Her covers have been pulled off by some unseen force. And she said she knew that she needed to get her covers, but she did not want to lean over the side of the bed to see what had pulled her covers. But after some time, she got some courage together and leaned over to get her covers out of the floor. And what happened next is something that I could not even imagine seeing, but she saw it. There, under her bed, being half out of her bed, was a man. He was only visible from the chest up, and she described him as terrifying. She said that he, she could not see his legs or anything like that. It was just his chest and his head, neck and head, exposed from underneath her bed. And she said that he was very pale and very, um, very scary looking. And she distinctly remembered certain features about him. She said he had very big eyes and he didn't have any eyebrows. And she didn't know what to do. She said she just jumped back up and laid there in her bed, terrified, unable to move, unable to run, unable to cry for help, but literally frozen in fear until the sun came up the next morning. And that's when she ran downstairs. And while I don't believe that she told my grandmother about the man under her bed, I believe that she left that part out. I think she stopped at the part where the attic doorknob was turning. I I don't believe that she ever told that second part because... I feel if she had of, she would have added that part of the story in, you know, to the rest of us over the years, Uh, but she didn't. And when I asked my mom who she thought this man was, like, did she have an explanation for what she thought this man under the bed was or who she thought it was, she would just say no. She would give no elaboration, no insight into what she thought this person or who she thought this person was. She said she just was frozen, completely frozen in fear. And this is sort of a story enhancement that sort of brings all the stories of the Campbell House to a close. Something that just, I imagine, was the final chapter for this house. My mom says that years later, when she was grown uh, and married to my dad, She and my father moved in to the upstairs of the house, and once again she was faced with dealing with the memories and personality of the upstairs of this home. And she says that over the years, lots of people had experiences in that bedroom that were similar but not as terrifying as the memories that she had. There were people who heard voices. There were people who felt you know, a presence, the attic doorknob turning, all of those things. Um, And what sort of stopped this activity from happening is my grandmother had said, enough is enough. She just did not want to hear any more of these stories. And she actually printed off Bible verses and hung them on the wall in that bedroom. And the story goes that no one else ever experienced anything else in the home. And then the answers to all the stories would come when my mom and dad moved in upstairs. So in between the bedroom where all the activity had taken place and the living room upstairs, they decided they wanted to knock out a wall to make the room larger. And when they tore the wall down, inside the wall there was pictures from you know, previous years of whoever had lived in or owned the home. And inside the wall was... You guessed it, a picture of the man who was under her bed when she was a young girl. And she said that he 
looked just about the same, except maybe a little healthier and alive in those photos. And the only explanation that we got for who it possibly could have been is they believed it was the son of the previous owner who they had heard had passed away. And that is your scary story for this season. Um, Good luck with your bed covers. So while I can't believe that we've had a full season of history and mysteries, I am glad that this season is over. I have gotten out of the vault all of the terrifying Campbell Street stories that are on my mom's side of the family. Um, I do think that there are a bunch of other ones that I can sprinkle in from my mom's side of the family. But in season two, we're going to dive into some of my dad's stories from his side of the family. And... um, they may be more disturbing. (laughs) So thank you to everyone who supported the podcast this season and for these 10 episodes. And I will see you in a few weeks with a whole new season of content. If you are enjoying the History and Mysteries podcast, there are multiple ways for you to show your support. You can go to the website at historyandmysteries.com where all of the episodes live forever and you can listen to them as many times as you want. You can also read some of the written stories that go along with each episode that sometimes give a little bit more detail than what's available in the podcast episode. You could also join the fan club where we give early access to weekly episodes and some behind the scenes look into the people of these stories. If you want to follow along on Instagram, you can do that at history and mysteries. And we're starting to go live each week with a guest where we're telling a story live on Instagram. And that's a lot of fun if you want to join in. And lastly, you could tell a friend, tell anyone you know, who enjoys mystery, history, paranormal encounters, and spooky stories.